In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jews, If I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is not true. But there is another who testifies on my behalf, and I know that the testimony he gives on my behalf is true. You sent emissaries to John, and he testified to the truth. I do not accept human testimony, but I say this so that you may be saved. He was a burning and shining lamp, and for a while you were content to rejoice in his light. But I have testimony greater than John's. The works that the Father gave me to accomplish, these works that I perform testify on my behalf that the Father has sent me. Moreover, the Father who sent me has testified on my behalf. But you have never heard his voice nor seen his form, and you do not have his word remaining in you, because you do not believe in the one whom he has sent. You search the scriptures because you think you have eternal life through them. Even they testify on my behalf, but you do not want to come to me to have life. I do not accept human praise. Moreover, I know that you do not have the love of God in you. I came in the name of my Father, but you do not accept me. Yet if another comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe when you accept praise from one another and do not seek the praise that comes from the only God? Do not think that I will accuse you before the Father. The one who will accuse you is Moses, in whom you have placed your hope. For if you had believed Moses, you would have believed me, because he wrote about me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? The Gospel of the Lord. Among other things in today's Gospel, Jesus speaks to us of the life that he's come to give us, the life that he promises us if we approach him, if we open ourselves up to him. But you have never heard his voice or seen his form, and you do not have his word remaining in you, because you do not believe in the one whom he has sent. You search the scriptures, because you think you have eternal life through them. Even they testify on my behalf, but you do not want to come to me to have life. And a little later on, Jesus says, I know that you do not have the love of God in you. And so what is this life that uh, Jesus wants to give us? What is this life that he wants us to come to him to receive? Well, in the first place, I think it's charity. Right? God is love. God is charity. Deus caritas est. And so when we go to God, when we go to our Lord Jesus Christ, and we go to God to receive life, he gives us his life. Right? He gives us charity, concern for others, and worship and love of God. And these days, that is so important. Right? It's so important. There's so many people who are alone. Think of the people you know who are isolated. Well, maybe you can give them a call. At least you can, you can pray for them. There are so many people who are suffering, right, who need, who need some help. Well, let's think about the ways, in addition to prayer, that we can support these people, that we can love each other. And we have to just let, like, look out for opportunities. There was a great story <clears throat> the other day that made the news which was um, a story about a woman who was a, uh, a professional runner. Uh, she looked to be in about, you know, her 20s, mid to late 20s. And um, I think she was from Oregon, if I'm not mistaken. In any event, she was in the supermarket, um, walking in the parking lot, heading to the store. And she heard this voice from a car close to her call out, help, help. And she went over to the car. And it was a, uh, uh, an older woman, a little old lady in the, in the driver's side with her husband next to her in the passenger seat. And she had the window rolled down just a crack, just so that she can, she can yell through it. And so this lady approached and said, what do you need, ma'am? You know, what's the problem? And she said, well, my husband and I heard that this virus is affecting older people uh, much more than others. And we don't have any family in the area. And so we're afraid to go into the store. And so this lady said, well, how can I help you? And she said, well, if you take this $100 bill and this grocery list, if you could uh, buy the groceries for us, that would be great. And so this lady said, sure, of course I'll do that. And she goes to the store, she buys the groceries, she brings it back out to the car, puts them in the back seat. And then she goes home and she thinks, um, well, maybe I should post about this, right? So she posted on Facebook and it was a huge explosion. It went, it went totally viral. I can't remember how many, how many reposts and how many uh, likes and hits it got. 
but it was it was huge. It was so huge that it made the news, right? She was she was interviewed uh, on the local news about this. And so these simple acts, you know, people are hungry for charity. People need charity. People respond to charity. That this 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 kind act in a parking lot, which seems like no big deal, right? People are so interested, and they keep reposting it, and they and they, it's just, they interview this lady on on TV and say, well, what do you want your legacy to be, right? The legacy of this of this favor that you did. Um, and so we too have to have to live this. But as Christians, we realize I can't do this on my own, right? On my own, I'll think about myself too much. On my own, I'll worry about myself too much. On my own, I'll complain. I'll think about what's, what's lacking in my life and not what's lacking in others and, and how I can help them. And so let's open ourselves up to our Lord Jesus Christ today, now, and see how we can live charity in this time that needs charity, that's starving for the love of God, the love of others. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.